All right, we're back. We're on page five of notes 15, and this is review, and this all could be on the AP exam if you are in uh, maybe any AP calculus class. Oh, no, the, these are definitely BC questions at the bottom, but like this table stuff, definitely uh, Calc AB active material. So make sure you know how to do it is what I'm saying. All right, the functions f and g are twice differentiable functions. I think they're, I think that the word function appears too many times and there should be a dash. I think that the functions f and g are twice differentiable is a much better sentence. Uh, some values of each function, some values of each function and their first derivatives. Each function and its first, I don't know, this, I should edit this. Some values of each function and their first derivatives are in the table below. The function f is monotonic. Okay. So f is monotonic, but not g. So let's see what we're doing. Apply, approximate f prime of two, awesome. f prime of two is approximately secant line uh, f of three minus f of one over three minus one. So f of three, so we're doing two minus three is negative one over two, negative one half. There you go, that's it. You don't. You don't justify anything. You don't throw a mean value theorem out there. You just like, boom, slope the secant line. That's how you do it. Prove that G prime of R is three halves for some R. All right, so uh, G is differentiable because it's twice differentiable and therefore G is continuous. So let's start with that. Uh, what? G of X is differentiable, which implies continuous. Therefore, I mean, this feels like a mean value theorem problem, so I'm just gonna go for it. But mean value theorem, g prime of r apparently equals g of three minus g of one over three minus one, which equals hopefully three halves. Uh, g of three, so that's six minus three is three over two. Yeah, three over two. And then for some r, um, I guess I'll do this one less than r less than three. Perfect. That's just that's straight up mean value theorem. Um, write the equation line tangent to f inverse at x equals three. Okay. So x equals three is on the inverse. So let's see. This is. x for inverse, therefore y for f. So I have to figure out where f is equal to three. Um, f of x is equal to three at one. Okay, so then I know three one is on f inverse because one three is on f of x. And so the slope of the inverse at x equals three is one over f prime of one, which is, so when in doubt, I just kind of like start writing. Uh, and what I'm always in doubt of is like what notation I should really be using, but uh, f prime of one is negative one. So this is gonna be uh, negative one. And then we need the tangent line, so tangent line is going to be y minus one equals negative one x minus three. That is going to be my answer. So I'm going to highlight it. There we go. Looking good. Uh, write the equation line tangent to, oh my god, uh, h of x is f of g of x minus three x squared. All right, so we need h of at what? h of one is gonna be f of g of one minus three times one squared. It's gonna be f of, what is g of one? g of one is three. g of one is three. So f of three minus three. What is f of three? f of three is two. Okay, so it's gonna be two minus three, which is negative one. And then h prime of x is going to be f prime of g of x times g prime of x minus c 
six X. So then H prime of one will be F prime of G of one, G prime of one minus six. So I need F prime of G of one, G prime of one. Can I like write that up here? F prime of G of one times G prime of one minus six. So that's F prime of G of one is three, G prime of one minus six. F prime of three is negative two. G prime of one is three minus six, negative 12. Okay, so I think you should show all that work um, because it's like easier to track back when you make a mistake. But I know like it's like a losing, losing argument. It's really hard to get people to do it. Um, so let's see. I'm gonna say the tangent line is y minus negative one, y plus one equals the slope, which is negative 12, x minus one. I think that's it. That was a lot of stuff. So hopefully that's right. It's the right idea for sure. Calculator, find the slope of that at x equals 10 for that. All right. So I need to, I hate this notation. All right, let g of x equal f inverse of x. So g prime of 10 equals one over f prime of, I'm gonna say like a. And then if I say that f of x equals 10 yields x equals a. All right, so that's what I want. And now I'm just gonna let a calculator do it because I, I don't think you can do this by hand. I mean, it says calculator, so you should use a calculator. All right, f of x is 3x cubed plus 19 plus the natural log of x. We need to solve, solve f of x equals 10 for x. Why are there two identical values? What? Like, I never have seen that before. What is the derivative of f of x? Um, so what, that has a zero at zero. I've never seen that before. It's giving me two values that are the same. So like what I was trying to see is like, is this always increasing, decrease, like what's happening there? But like, it's not, so for x, Solve answer greater than zero for x. Um, hmm. But like it's always, so the function itself is always increasing for x greater than zero. So like there should not be two x values where this happens, where it equals 10. Um, I don't know. I think that that's, that's our value. Is this problem that weird? Let me, let me graph it. I wasn't expecting to run into a problem that I found. Okay, you can't even like see it. Okay, oh yeah, and the domain is greater than zero anyway. So if I add 10 and I box around this, this is like a puzzling thing here. Oh my God. Yeah, it's like basically zero. All right, am I gonna be able to do this? Let's, well, let me, let me just find the intersection here because it's easy, a little easy. It's actually easier to store. Menu eight, one, three or four, depending on your calculator. There and there. Okay, I'm gonna store that. So arrow over it, control menu, and choose option five. I'm gonna store that as A, because I said I would. Can't accept change is out of allowed range. What does that mean? Can I store it as B? Okay. Is this problem just trash? 3x cubed. 3x cubed plus 19. All right, let's try this. Uh, what do you have? Oh my gosh. They're like the same-ish number, but not exactly the same. This is a puzzle. Have I never done these problems before? That seems unusual. 
a colon equals. All right, so I need derivative f of x comma x such that x equals a. And I need one over that answer, which is like the same number again. Is it the same number again? It is like the same number again. Uh, uh, all right, I'm just gonna write it down. Uh, approximately 0 0.0001234. It's like basically zero. So it's essentially zero because the function is essentially vertical at that point. I don't know, that's, that's a puzzle. Uh, no one's ever asked me about that. So I'm feeling like, what if, can the calculator hold up? Let's, let's see this. Can the calculator do solve f of y equals x? Can it just find the inverse? Nope, not really. Um, okay, so there you go. I don't know, slope's basically zero. Makes sense because the original, I, you can see it, it's like, it's practically vertical. If you just had to guess the slope of the inverse, you would definitely say it's uh, gonna be basically, oh yeah, it's basically vertical, so its slope is like, you know, dividing by zero, so the reciprocal is, yeah. All right, I don't know, that was a bad problem. It's, it's a good idea, just really bad problem. That's one I'm gonna put on my my uh, mental agenda of uh, things that I should change, but I'll never change. All right, this this gotta converge. There's no way this doesn't converge. What did we? What do we do to show that it converges though? Mm. Um, three over n is less than. Uh, three over four for n, let's say less than or equal to n greater than or equal to four. So then uh, three over n to the n is less than or equal to three over, n, uh, no, three over four to the n for n greater than or equal to four. And then the sum of three fourths to the n converges because it's geometric with r equal three fourths, which is less than one. Therefore, I mean, you can look at that and be like, those are getting really small really fast. Like there's no way that doesn't converge. One to infinity of three over n to the n converges by direct comparison, Durkamp. There we go. Durkamp sounds to me like a, um, who's Emil, Emil Durkheim? Is like a, what is he, like a sociologist or something? Durkheim sounds like a, some kind of sociologist. Assuming Durkheim is also one, but I'm not sure of that. This diverges by limit comparison to one over n, the harmonic series. So, I mean, it just says which converge and diverge. No, it says which converge. Pi, is pi squared? I suppose it's like nine-ish. And then E cubed's gotta be bigger than this. This definitely converges. Converges uh, because R, the absolute value of R is pi squared over E cubed, which is less than one. So geometric because geo width. There you go, that's our uh, little review. This problem is kind of terrible, I think. Um, but the rest of it's pretty good. So make sure you know how to do all this stuff. This is the key to doing well on the AP exam. I like for all of my students to get a five. Um, the key is to just do a lot of review, like always be thinking about old material. Uh, really, if you're in Calc BC, one of the best things you can do is find someone who's Calc AB and like help them with their homework, help them study, uh, because you need to know everything. So uh, I'm gonna end this here. I'll be back in the next uh, set of notes and uh, we're doing something entirely different. So I will see you there.